the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi, and welcome back to the Introduction to R course. This is Module 10, Video 3, and we are talking about how to nest functions within one another. Now, if you remember back to all of the loops that we went over in a previous module, we talked about how we could nest loops within one another. Well, we can do the same thing with functions, which can be extremely useful, especially when you don't want a function to be extremely huge and you want to make sure that it only does a minimum amount of work. Because if you remember back from the first video, I talked about how we want to try to keep the body of your function to be as small as possible so that it can make your code very efficient. Same thing with for loops and while loops and repeat loops. You want your body of the the code block or the body of the function to be as short as possible so that it doesn't take as long for the computer to compute. Now, with functions, it's the same thing. You don't want to have too much complexity to your function. Sometimes complexity is needed. However, you try to minimize the amount of complexity because that lengthens the amount of time that it takes longer for the computer to handle the function and continue from there. So really, the best way to make a function is to make it do one specific thing and then have multiple functions that are all working together in order to perform your end goal. Now, with nested functions, that makes that goal possible. The way to do that is say I've got a function here, I called it nested function, and it's just a simple one. It adds x and y, returns a. Now, that part is not nested. There's no nesting of any functions going on there. That's just the base function. This right here is the nested part. We are putting the nested function and placing the function within the arguments twice. So we're going to have 4 plus 3 and returning that. And then we're doing 9 plus 10 and returning that. Then we are adding the sum of those two and returning that, which is going to give us 26. You see here how they are nested inside of the arguments of the function. Now that is one possibility. However, another possibility is just placing the function within the body of another function as you are writing that next function. So we have here an example of an outer function being the one on the outside and then a nested function, which is our same nested function from above here on the inside. What this does is it says, okay, for the nested function, I have to go and refer back to this function up here before I can compute this outer function here. So if we were to perform this, we would need to add X and Y together, get the return, the answer to that function, and then use that to multiply it by z. And if you notice here as well, that for this outer function, I have to provide the arguments of the nested function as well. Now you don't have to do that. You might use something within your function. You might have an additional lines within the outer function that might specify exactly what x and y are going to be. And then you plug those into the function after solving them in the beginning part of the function, or you need to include them in your arguments as well so that R knows what to put in for X and Y and Z. Otherwise, unless you have a global variable that's already X or already Y, R is not going to be able to know what those two variables are, and it's going to throw you an error saying these are not defined. You do have to be careful, though, because R is going to try to give you what you want or what it thinks you want. So if you have a global variable X and a global variable Y, meaning there's an X in the y and a Y out here somewhere, maybe way up in your code, and you've already defined them as, say, 4 for X, then as, say, 20 for X up here, and you are looking to make X actually 4, as you specify in this function call here. However, if you do not specify this, and you do not include that in your iteration, R is going to pull that X value that you've already done way up in your code, or something that's saved in your global environment, even though it might not be on this script or it might not be 
something that you use that day, but R has it saved in the global environment, it's going to pull that in and use it for X because it wants to perform the function the best that it can. And it thinks that, oh, you're trying to use that X variable from before. So just make sure that if you are including a function within another function, you either specify what those arguments are going to be by including them in your outer function or making sure that you define them somehow inside the function that you're plugging in to the nested function inside of it. Now let's go ahead and run this code. And we get 140 because we have four plugged in for X three plugged in for y, we add those together, that gives us seven, and then we multiply seven times 20 to get 140. Another, a bit more complicated way of thinking about nested functions is known as recursion. Recursion is complicated, and I'm just going to introduce you to recursion here so that you know what is possible and what is out there. However, it is definitely a skill to be able to think about recursion in this way and to be able to truly use it effectively because as you notice here i placed a careful message saying that it's easy to write a function that never terminates or uses excess amounts of memory or processing power and usually the whole reason you're trying to do recursion is to reduce the amount of memory and processing power that you need if you write a function that then increases it and causes excess amounts that's completely defeating the purpose of using recursion and you might as well just go and use a for loop so that is generally how recursions are used they're used as a way to perform a task more efficiently than a for loop would however you have to make sure that you are writing them correctly so if you are really feeling going for recursion there are some recursion examples at this website here or you can go online and research further. However, this is just the basics so that you know what recursion is. Recursion specifically is where you use the function and call it within itself. We're not nesting another function inside of the function. We're nesting the function within itself, which sounds kind of crazy. However, it works when you make it so that the recursion does terminate. So if you remember our while loop or our repeat loop, they had to terminate. Well, the same thing with the recursion. You have to create a situation where the recursion is going to finish, is going to end. And what happens is you take your recursion and given this simple recursion where we've got the number six in here, basically what it's going to do is it's going to take six and it's going to plug it in here for K. Then it's going to plug it in here for K because it's greater than zero, right? And then we've got the try recursion again. So it can't figure out the answer to this until it does the next step, which is six minus five. And then it does the try recursion of five. And so it's going to take five and plug it in here and here. But it can't figure that out because try recursion is here again. And so it has to go into the next one, which is try recursion of four. Then it has to go on again and again and again until we get to the point where K is less than zero and we no longer satisfy this condition. Once that happens, the result is zero and we return that result. And then R is able to figure out when my K was one, I was able to fill in that result. And then I'm able to backfill in all of the other ones that were just sitting there waiting to be solved because I now have my final answer, which is K equals one. And then it's able to figure out all of the other answers from there and then finally get our answer. So if we go ahead and run this code, that's what we see here. Okay, each time we are running this and then it's going to print them out. And then at the end, we get 21. And like I said, this is a basic overview. If you're looking to really understand what goes on with recursions and how to understand them, because it is a difficult way of thinking about solving problems because it's kind of like you have to reverse engineer it and that can be difficult to just wrap your head around so if you're going to try to tackle recursion make sure that you look up plenty of examples and really understand how to make that recursion function terminate so that it's not going on forever and ever like a while loop 
when the condition is impossible to break. Okay, so that was the basics of nested functions in R, how you can nest functions within the arguments, how you can nest them within other functions, and also how you can nest a function within itself in recursion. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.